Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the units or nodes that are available in Bolt. So here is a quick demo that I made. And in this demo, if you click on the cube, the cube jumps and then it falls back. If you click on the cube when it's in there, it's going to change color. But when the cube is on the ground and you click on it, it doesn't change color. And uh, let's go ahead and see how I set that up and what nodes are we going to take a look at in this video. So here's the only graph that was in that demo. And I centered the whole demo around the once node. Right here, I have a mouse down event. And that's the event that triggers when you click on the object in the scene. If you want to see how this node is made, check out my tutorial how I create it manually. The downside of using mouse down event versus the custom one that I created is that in the custom one that I created, I was able to set the maximum distance of an array. And here you don't have that control. So if you want to limit how far the mouse can click, check out that video. And in there, I walk through the whole process of how to set that up. Right here on the bottom, we have on collision enter. And this on collision enter is the same event that you would use in C sharp. And it's triggered whenever the rigid body collides with another rigid body or a collider. And then right here in the middle, I have once. For you to better understand how the once works, I recreated the once logic inside a super unit. So if we go inside here, this graph right here, is the idea behind the once unit. We have the reset input and all it does, it clears the flag. There's a variable inside the graph that I call flag. And that variable is used to remember the state of the graph. So that's how the reset works. Now, when you pass in an input, first it checks for the flag. If the flag is not set, we get a false. It branches out, sets the flag and triggers the once output. If you click on it again, it checks again for the flag and the flag is set. It branches out at true and it triggers the after. So if you ever end up manually setting up this logic, remember that there is a unit that is provided by Bolt called once that can do this kind of flag setting for you and it will save you some time. So in here, how I set up once was if you click on the object, the cube, then when you click it for the first time, it sets the rigid body velocity to five in the Y direction. And that's what creates the jump. The rigid body velocity is exactly the same as you would use in C sharp. When you click the object for the first time, the object will jump. But when you click the object for the second time before it hits the ground, it will trigger the afterflow, which is gonna set the random color. And how I set the random color is by getting the mesh renderer of my object, pulling the material that I'm using for it, then using a random color generator and passing those into the material set color unit. So to set the color, I had to also pass in a name and this string right here, the underscore base color, is the name that is used for this color inside of this shader. And I already mentioned that on collision enter, whenever it hits the ground, the ones get reset, which allows the click on the object to make the jump again. Let's take a look at the demo again. So if I click on the object, you can see it jumps and jumps again. But if I click on the object and then click on the object again when it's in the air, it actually changes colors. Click on the like button and subscribe to my channel to let me know that you want to see more of this videos. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. See you in the next video.